I've been waiting a long time for this clear night. It's my first opportunity in nearly six months to do some astrophotography. I've got this wall in my back garden that might shield me from the lights. I'll keep the cameras down low. And I'm really interested to see what can we do from right here in the light pollution capital of Europe. This is what I'm going to be using to photograph the stars tonight. Ordinary camera tripod, a little star tracking device to compensate for the Earth turning, and old Canon camera with a 200 millimeter telephoto lens. The first thing I need to do is line up the star tracker with the North Star, Polaris. The latitude is 50 odd degrees north, and that means I need to raise this and find Polaris up there in the sky and point the telescope at it. So, job done. You can see the much higher angle, and I've had to move cables around to make that happen. And now I'm ready to take some photos. So it's very easy to do that. You just need to set your camera to take an exposure that's a few seconds long, and you need to focus your lens on a star. So I'm going to find a star, I'm going to focus, and then let's just see what happens. It's really hard to see stars here. There's so much light pollution. So the star that I found is Kokab. It's the second star in the Little Dipper, Ursa Minor. And it's bright enough for me to focus on it, just. Now to get the star in focus, I'm using live view on the back of the camera and manual focus. The telephoto lens autofocus is not good enough to focus on a star this faint. There, that's it. It's worth taking your time to get the focus right, otherwise you're going to be frustrated. That was a nice easy star to focus on, but the good stuff is up there. So I need to move around and go and find something worth photographing. What I found is the Pleiades star cluster, Messier 45. So if you just go and press the camera button, you're going to knock the camera and everything's going to be a bit blurry. So I'm using an intervalometer and this will take the photos for me through a cable. It's all electronic. This plugs into the camera and there we go taking the first photo. And I'm just going to stop it there and take a little look at the photo that I got and see that it's okay. Wow, there really is a lot of light pollution. Well, that was the first photo. It didn't go very well. I needed to change some settings to adjust for the conditions here. I think I've got it right now. I'm going to take a 10 second long exposure there we go. 10 seconds is quite a long time. A normal photograph lasts about 4 milliseconds. So in 10 seconds you're getting 2,500 times as much light and it's still going to be a dark picture of stars. It's just finished. So I want to take a look and see what I got there. Wow, there is really a lot of light pollution. The picture is kind of white, I'm struggling to see stars at all, but they are there. And so the trick now is to take not just one photo, but a whole lot. I'm going to take 60 photos or so and stack them up in the computer and just see what comes out. So there we go. Now I'm going to go inside, get warm, have a cup of coffee and come back later. The camera's done its job. I've got my photos. If I check on the back, they're still there, they're still tracked. It's all looking pretty good. In fact, I can see more stars than I thought I would from this place. 
But what do you do if you don't have a fancy star tracker like this? I want to show you what you could do with the camera that you have. If you can get hold of a good mirrorless camera or a DSLR, that really is the best way. And the lens that I've got is not a zoom lens, it's just a telephoto lens. But you can use pretty much whatever you have. A modern digital camera these days is probably good enough to do astrophotography. And you don't need the fanciest camera because you can't take advantage of it because of all the light pollution. You just need something that can take an exposure of one or two seconds and record some stars. So I'm going to get rid of my advantage. I'm going to turn off the star tracker. And that means I can't take such long exposures. I'm also going to get rid of the intervalometer because although it's only about 20 euros, you might not be ready to invest in one of those yet. Camera settings are pretty simple. Most cameras have got an option where you can lock the mirror up. When you lock up the mirror, it means when you press the button, the mirror goes up and then it doesn't shake. You can also set the camera so that there's a timer. So about two seconds after you press the button is when the picture is actually going to get taken. And you need to set the camera so that the exposure time itself will be not too long. And I know with this lens, 200 millimeter focal length, I'm going to need one second. I'm really pushing it if I do more than one second. And ISO on a Canon, it does matter. ISO 1600 is good. So I'm going to try to not disturb the camera as much as possible. I'm just going to squeeze it between my thumb and my forefinger, squeeze like that. And it took a one second exposure. And I'm just looking at what comes out of the back of the camera. And in one second, it actually records enough light to make a decent picture. So I'm going to sit and do this for a while. I'm not going to sit here and do 600 one second photos to make it equivalent to the 60 10 second photos that I took with this intervalometer. I just don't have the patience for that. And I also know it's just not going to be such a good result. But I want to show you what is possible with a fairly simple technique. Now, of course, while I'm doing this, the Earth's rotating and the stars are moving that way. So if I just put the photos together afterwards, it's going to make a star trail. The important thing is to get the best quality photo that you can without using software or any computer tricks and then to take those good quality photographs and process them later on the computer. But while you're out under the stars, just go for really good quality data collection. Oh, and you might be wondering uh, why it isn't all that dark in my backyard. It's because I'm recording this video. So I've got four lights shining on my face at the moment. First of all, it doesn't make much of a difference. The lights are not shining into the camera. But I'll show you what it looks like with the lights off and you'll see why I need to have them to make a video that will tell you anything about how to photograph stars. This is what it looks like with the lights off and you can see it's pretty dark. I've switched target. I'm no longer looking at the Seven Sisters. It's set behind my roof but now I've got a great view of Orion and the Orion Nebula. It's important to get comfortable if you're going to do this. So if you're using manual settings, well, just relax, get into a place where you don't have to move very much and you can take this repetitive movement again and again. So I finished with the Orion Nebula and I could pack up now and just get my photos. But I want to do just something very, very simple, which is some calibration shots. So I'm going to take some photos of the lens cap. And what this does is it records 
a camera's response to just being switched on and taking a photograph for 10 seconds without any light at all. And it's going to give me the zero error of every pixel on the camera. If I subtract that image from all my photographs of stars, I'll get a better picture. So I don't need to take 60 photos of this. 30 will be quite enough. So there we go. Um, see you in another five minutes. So that's it. The camera's finished taking the dark exposures and now I can take the lens cap off. Now, you might not intend to actually go as far as taking calibration images, but the thing is you need to take them at the same time that you take the photos of stars. If you don't do it at the time, your camera might change and you'll end up with one or two pixels that you can never get right in your images. So even if you don't intend to calibrate, calibrate and later on your future self will thank you. There is one other thing you could do to make your pictures even better and that's to take photographs of something that is pure white um, with no details at all. So I'm going back to old tech which is just some sheets of white paper in front of a laptop screen. Of course on the laptop screen you just have a plain white screen and you take 30 photographs of that you get the exposure right, you just put it on auto exposure. But the important thing is to keep the aperture of the lens the same as it was when you took the photos of the stars. Don't change the focus, don't change anything about the camera, and do it straight away. And if you've got that, you can always come back later and calibrate the pictures. How do you calibrate? Well, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video, um, but if you are interested, get hold of me, I'll tell you. Otherwise, it's very easy to look it up on the internet. Uh, really not difficult. And there's free software that can do it all for you.